hello, Chargers fans. Welcome into the Guilty as Charged podcast. The Chargers finally signed a tight end. I know everyone was getting worried when everybody else was either re-signing with their teams or getting tagged or going elsewhere. It seemed like we were down to Jared Cook returning. It was basically Jared Cook, Gerald Everett, and then Anthony Ferkser as the options, or maybe somehow Kyle Rudolph. But the Chargers ended up with their guy. They got Gerald Everett, a guy that we sort of could have connected to the team because of that Rams connection, but obviously Brandon Staley did not coach the offensive side of the football, so it wasn't a guarantee, but obviously they liked something there with Gerald Everett. They signed him to the team, so let's get into that right now. We're going to talk about some of the stats, the contract, and the value that it presents, and then we'll get into just a little bit of film to talk about what enticed the Chargers to go after Gerald Everett and spend some money on him. So as it currently stands, the Chargers gave Gerald Everett a two-year, $12 million deal with up to $13.5 million, $8 million of that fully guaranteed. It seems like the Chargers are finding ways to get a lower APY by guaranteeing more of the contract. That seems to be the theme of what they're doing right now. They're finding ways to get the, the contracts, the cap hits, to be just under what normally is the market for these guys or what it, maybe it could be, but they're guaranteeing more upfront. At least that's the way it seems. We saw that as early... As the Mike Williams deal, we now see it with something like Gerald Everett. Austin Johnson's contract just came out. That has a lot of guarantees to it. So that just seems to be the way that they're going. But we'll work with the $6 million APY right now. And comparing him to other tight ends that got contracts on the composite rankings, I think Gerald Everett joining the Chargers on that contract is a fantastic bargain buy for them. So if you don't know what our composite rankings are, we take the stats that Pro Football Focus offers. And we, we focus on per play stats. So not receiving yards, not receiving touchdowns, not drops, but rather yards after the catch per reception, yards per route run, drop rate, that sort of thing. We take you know eight or nine or so different stat categories. We rank all the free agents in those categories, take the average ranking, and then rank all the players based on that average ranking. So if you're you know 1.5 or whatever, and if that's the lowest number, you'd be first and going all the way down. So out of 15, Gerald Everett was seventh. And to be completely honest, Max Williams barely made the snap count cut. He was first. Probably should have left him off the list, though, considering the injury. So Gerald Everett, depending how you look at it, was either seventh or sixth if you take Max Williams off. Because Max Williams was number one. But I don't know if I buy that he would have been the, the number one option there. But on a per play basis, he was. He made it. So I guess it's only fair. Now, Everett was ahead of someone like Mike Gusecki. I think Gusecki was 10th, maybe, or 11th. I'm not saying Gerald Everett is a better player than Mike Gusecki, but on a per-play basis, he did rank higher. Also, some of that, um, we also did include blocking in there as well. But still, Everett was altogether higher on the list than someone like Mike Gusecki, who got that, what, $11 million tag or whatever it is. Might get more if he gets wide receiver money at some point. I don't know. Um, but the goal of this was just to find of the composite rankings is to find the best value. Who's the best on a per play basis? And I think when it comes to offense in particular, whether it's running back, wide receiver, tight end, you want to find the guys, especially with the Chargers offense, who do well on a per play basis because you can't go out and they had no opportunity to because everyone was tagged, but you can't go out and spend a ton of money on tight ends when you you know re-sign someone like Mike Williams. Once Mike Williams was back, that didn't really leave them any options to go out and spend a ton of money on a tight end, even though there were no big name tight ends really left at that point. So you got to find guys that are good on a per play basis because the whole thing is if you take somebody, and it was true for all tight ends, even the expensive ones, if you take one of these tight ends, whether it's David Njoku or you know Gerald Everett, and you pair them with Justin Herbert, they're likely going to have a career year. And so you want to find guys that if they're so good on a per play basis, you just give them more plays, more opportunities in this offense with Justin Herbert, and they're more likely to outperform their contract. And the Chargers got really good value here because you have someone like Zach Ertz, who is fifth in our composite rankings at about $10.5 million a year. But two spots below him is Gerald Everett at $6 million per year. Now, I'm not saying that Everett's a better tight end than Ertz, but Everett has a much better chance of outperforming his contract at $6 million a year with Justin Herbert than Zach Ertz at $10.5 million a year, even with Justin Herbert, but especially not with Justin Herbert. You know, CJ Uzama, I believe, went to the Jets. He's $2 million more per year than Gerald Everett, 
but he's less likely to outperform that contract than Everett is because Everett, A, is with Justin Herbert and Uzama's with Zach Wilson, and B, Uzama's $2 million more. So the Chargers getting a player who's only one spot behind Uzama on the composite rankings, but for $2 million less than Uzama, that's really good value. And you look at Evan Ingram, who is 15th out of 15 on our composite rankings. He got, I think, that one-year $9 million contract, if I'm not mistaken. That's overpaying for somebody who's not great on a per-play basis, at least compared to the rest of his free agents, so, or his free agent group. So Everett, I think, presents fantastic value. But more than anything else, he is just a significant upgrade over Jared Cook. Doesn't matter where you look. Yards per route run, you go from, you know, from Cook to Everett, you go from 8th to 6th, right? Yards over the catch per reception, 8th to 7th. Now, this is rankings. Uh, these are the rankings among the free agents, not among all tight ends in football. So it could be more. It could be, you know, whatever. I don't know. I don't know if the ranking overall is very good, but compared to the rest of the free agents, you are getting a big jump over Jared Cook. So drop rate, that's the big one. 11th to 5th in Gerald Everett. I know some people were worried about Gerald Everett being, you know, kind of a hot or cold hit or miss hands guy, but he only dropped three last season and I believe only 14 the last five seasons overall. Jared Cook dropped seven. That counted. So to me, you know, yeah, maybe there's some drop concerns with Gerald Everett. It's a whole lot better than Gerald and then uh, Jared Cook, that's for sure. And then another one is pass blocking efficiency, right? You go from 11th, which I believe was last for Jared Cook, to fifth. And then pro football focused run blocking grade, you go from 11th to seventh. So you get a guy who's better pretty much across the board at every category outside of yards per reception. But then you also have a guy who's got more sure hands by a lot and then is a much better blocker. One of the problems with Jared Cook is, you know, not beyond the fact that he couldn't, you know, had issues catching the football. He also just wasn't a blocker. So when he was on the field, you knew that he's probably running a route. Like, I don't expect him to be blocking, you know, and, and you know, the reverse of that, Trey McKitty, when he's on the field, you knew that he was going to be blocking. You didn't think he was going out for a route. And if he was, he's certainly not a priority. Everett has the ability to do both, right? I'm not saying, you know, he ends up being a better receiver cook in this offense, although I think he will. And I'm not saying he's a better blocker than Trey McKitty, but he can do both things well enough where the defense isn't quite sure what he's doing when he's on the field. I think that's huge for the Chargers. So let's get into a little bit of film here now. And it's not necessarily going to be, you know, a breakdown of the concepts and what the Seahawks ran. I just, I don't know that. <laughs> I have certainly haven't watched much Seahawks football. And it's certainly not the past year with, you know, Geno Smith playing most of the snaps for quarterback. But I just want to talk about, you know, what it is that the Chargers saw in Gerald Everett in his role and then what he did with the football in his hands, you know, what he was asked to do, all that sort of stuff. You know, why was that a fit for them? Why did they think it was worth going and spending $6 million a year with $8 million guaranteed on a two-year deal on Gerald Everett? And the first thing I have to start with is this play here. And I'll go ahead and run it through real fast and then talk about it. But Gerald Everett is the guy in the spotlight here. He will always be the guy in the spotlight unless I forgot one. It's not about what the route is. It's not about what the play design was. So let's talk about, well, let me, let me, you do it. I'll, I'll let you uh, guess here. Tell me the two biggest concerns you had outside of age when it came to Jared Cook. I'll give you five seconds, right? So what was the biggest problems? The two biggest problems. Let's say it out loud. Ready? He drops the football. He quits on plays, right? I'm pretty sure that was the answer, right? A lot of Chargers fans were frustrated, like against the Bengals, where you know Justin Herbert is trying to extend the play. He is an incredible arm talent, incredible quarterback, extends the play, gets the ball to Jared Cook. Jared Cook isn't finishing the play. Don't have that first down. I know Chargers fans are really frustrated with Jared Cook in that regard. I'm not saying Gerald Everett has never quit on a play before, but it's encouraging when you turn on the film, you see something like this, a guy who not only doesn't quit on the play as is, but he's also worked with quarterbacks who do extend the uh, extend the play, at least last year. I'm not sure Jared Goff in 2020 was extending the play all that much, but you work with someone like Geno Smith, Russell Wilson, who can do that, and you're already used to doing that. I don't think Jared Cook with Drew Brees was exactly doing that very much, um, or even with Derek Carr with the Raiders and, and all that sort of stuff. So Gerald Everett here is not going to quit on the, on the play, and he's also going to catch the football with his hands and make a difficult catch. It's just something that Chargers fans were really hoping Jared Cook could do, and he just wasn't doing that. 
Okay, so the next play. When I talked about, you know, Trey McKitty, Jared Cook, and, and what they can do and what they can't do, the thing about Gerald Everett, which is awesome, is that he is able to be both a receiver or a tight end, I guess, and a blocker. You can do either with him. So at this point right here, the defense, maybe they know. Maybe, you know, they know their film study and they know. But to me or to you, the audience, you don't know what he's going to be doing here. Is he blocking? Is he going out for a route? Maybe you know because you know more football than I do. But to me, you know, the threat of what he can do, um, he can do it either way, right? He can block, he can go out for a route, he can block and go out for a route, which we'll show in a bit. You don't quite know. Um, so him being able to do that is fantastic because it opens up more for your offense. And I think what the Chargers are going to try to do with him, well, we'll show a couple of the, you know, the horizontal flat, you know, um, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Chip and release the flat sort of stuff that he does that I'm sure the Chargers will do, but they also will ask him to stretch the field and work the middle of the field. Now this, this play isn't going to be him working the middle of the field, but he is going to be working up the field and running a corner. Um, but one thing I want to talk about with the middle of the field in particular is Jared Cook's uh, reception rate over the middle this past season was I think 56 or 58%, which, you know, I, I don't know if that's good or if that's bad. If just looking at that number, but you compare it to Gerald Everett the last two years and Gerald Everett's at 84 and I think 86% the last two years. So you get about somewhere between a 25 to 30% jump in reception percentage over the middle. And the charges were really missing that. So you get a guy who can, you know, he can look like he's either blocking or running for a route or blocking, go out to a route. You have a guy who can stretch the field. You have a guy who can actually catch the ball over the middle of the field. You just have more with Gerald Everett. So this particular play, you know, after talking about all of that, the whole point of this play isn't even the route. It's not even really the catch. It's what he does. You know, we talked about all the things I like about him, right? But I think this is, I think this right here is what sold every Chargers fan. We'll have a couple of plays here from him doing this. It's what he does when the football is in his hands. And you're going to, you're going to see a physicality from him. I'll go ahead and run the play through, but you're going to see a physicality from him that the Chargers just did not have last year. You know, even though Jared Cook is pretty similar to him in his yards after the catch ranking per reception, that is, he's not exactly this. It's not the same yards after the catch. You know, this is a true yards after contact, fighting through contact, fighting for more yards play that the Chargers did not have with Jared Cook. Another thing that the Chargers fans were kind of you know worried about with, with Jared Cook and frustrated with him for, he just didn't fight for extra yards and. Again, I, I don't expect him really to at his age and you know what he does. I'm not asking you know Antonio Gates in his final season to go truck guys like a 27 year old, 26 year old Gerald Everett here, but you would like to see that from your tight end. And so the Chargers went out and they got themselves a guy that could. And you didn't see that from from Jared Cook. You didn't really see that from Mike Williams outside of. You know, maybe one play against the the Cowboys where he made that missed tackle or forced that missed tackle and then scored on that touchdown. That was great. You know, you, I don't think Keenan Allen forced more than one missed tackle all year, or I don't know how many tackles he might have broken. Didn't seem like he was. You know, Jalen Guyton was surprisingly nimble in certain situations, like fourth down, but he's not a guy that's it's known for breaking tackles or whatever. Gerald Everett is just so unique in that regard when it comes to the Chargers. So again, you have a guy who can block. You have a guy who can run the flats. You have a guy who can block, run out to the flat. You have a guy who can stretch the field. You have a guy who can catch the ball over the middle and is much better than Jerry Cook. And you have a guy who fights for yards like this. And it's not an isolated thing, right? You can go all over the film. I know once Gerald Everett signed, every Chargers person went to YouTube, downloaded his highlights, and, and showed how angry he runs. And, and sure, like, yeah, that is true. And it is true. But going through the film, it's not just that he does it on like a highlight reel he does it consistently and it's really impressive because gerald everett was a basketball player for three years in high school and he didn't play football until his senior year and the only reason he even played football is because he switched schools and when he got to the new school the basketball coach is like well i don't have any room for this guy so he looked at the football coach and said hey would you like him you know this 6'4 200 pound player football coach goes sure and gerald everett played wide receiver Right. So he wasn't even a tight end at the time. He was playing wide receiver. So for him to have picked up this physicality, I think it kind of speaks to his basketball background because he is no problem lowering his shoulder, right? And being physical. 
I, again, I don't know what position he played in, in basketball, but he has a physicality to him that I wouldn't have expected from a guy who was a wide receiver for one year in high school, then went to community college and finally got to South Alabama, then made it to the league. Like this is just seems so unique for a guy who didn't grow up playing this competitively. So it's really impressive. Same play here, or not same play, new play here, but same idea. It's it's not necessarily about what he's asked to do. It's not about you know what the concept is or whatever. It's just the fact that he fights for extra yards. He's going to catch the ball about at the at the 30 yard line or so and get another nine or ten yards, breaking about two or three tackles along the way. He runs angry. I, I know this is on the highlight reel, and I'm sure you've already seen this, but I mean to really appreciate it, just this wide angle here and how hard he fights. It's fantastic. I mean, imagine, yeah, I'll talk about this in a bit, but just the more layups we can get for Justin Herbert, the better. You know, what an easy, like, just turns around, catches the football, and just gives you another, you know, 10 yards or so after the catch. I wish the Chargers would have had that last year, right? Um, okay, so this final play here, just to kind of emphasize that, you know, he does fight. You know, he's always a fighter. He's going to be physical. There's no reason for him to catch this ball on the flat and you know try to truck the defender, trying to go out of bounds. But he just does. He just <laughs> he just does. I don't know what it is. Again, it's a surprise to me that he does this and that he's that physical because he just doesn't have, you know, he just is so comfortable doing it. I wouldn't have expected it from a guy who was a wide receiver. And you know, you think of, you know, Keenan Allen, you think of Jalen Guyton, you know, even Mike Williams, they don't have this lower the shoulder truck you mentality that Everett has granted he is a you know a, a tight end so that physicality i guess comes with the position but it's still surprising you know and what does he get from this play you know just by just by knocking this guy over let's say he makes contact about here at the 24 23 and a half let's say you know he might have gotten another one or two yards out of that it's, it's hard to tell i'm positive at the right time but there's just an extra yard there because he's trying to be physical and the funny thing is, I should have recorded more of these because this happens every other play. If he has the opportunity to run into somebody, he just does. And you know, I don't want him to unnecessarily take hits. I don't want him to be so physical that he gets hurt midway through the season. But you know, if it's if it's part of his game and he's good at it and it works for him, go for it, dude. Again, I don't want him to get hurt, but if it works for him, it works for him. Okay, so. Um, like I said earlier, it's not just that he's a good receiver it's that he also can block and he's going to block and then release out to the flat here. I want to say it's Gina Smith or Russell Wilson. He's going to get the ball to him. And what I want you to focus on here after the block, of course, and I'll, I'll play that a couple of times is just the missed tackles forced the charge. This isn't a, a play where, you know, he gets, you know, 50 yards for a touchdown or, you know, 65 yards for a touchdown, but it's easy yards for him because he forces a, a, a tackle to be missed. And it's just the Chargers didn't have that. You know, you watch the Bengals in the postseason and you see Samaj P. Ryan, you know, take a Joe Burrow pass 40 yards to the house. Did anybody do that for the Chargers this past year? I couldn't think of one. You know, for whatever reason, the Chargers didn't have these great after the catch performances. Also, just because they just didn't have the guys. Jared Cook's not doing this. Donald Parham was surprisingly good after the catch, but I don't think it's a, you know, a, a, a missed tackle force for 40 yards sort of thing like Samaj B. Ryan. Um, you know, Mike Williams wasn't doing it. Keenan Allen wasn't doing it. Jalen Guyton can't really do it. You know, Austin Eckler can, but that's about it. He's your running back. So Gerald Everett, you know, he, I think, had 11 missed tackles forced in 2021. Jared Cook had two. So, so anytime you can get someone who's, you know, more, five, more than five times better at something, than the person they're replacing. Anytime you can do that, I think go for it. And you get 11 missed tackles forced from Gerald Everett here in an offense where he didn't get a ton of volume. So in this offense, this upcoming year with as much volume as he's projected to get, you could be looking at 14, 15 missed tackles forced. And if the Chargers can get that out of him, I mean, look out again. It's, it's a, it's a, he can do so many things and there are reasons to upgrade you know him over Jared Cook. But the fact that he can, you know, make missed tackles or he can force missed tackles is so key and it's going to be so key for this offense. So he's going to block this edge rusher here. I want to say it's Hunter, but I could be wrong. 
block the edge right here, work out to the flat, catch the ball, make, I believe, this defensive back miss, and pick up a first down. So just first off, block, right? Or not that nice block, nice chip, nice help out there. Good pop there. Again, physical, a physical guy. Make somebody miss. Get that first down. Nice setup. It's almost like a good kickoff return or punt return. I'm sure he'd be a better returner than uh, Roundtree and Kelly were, that's for sure. Let's play it all the way through. And the Chargers, the, the, the Seahawks didn't run this specifically, but the Chargers would do a lot of bootleg, you know, and then motion, pre-snap motion from the tight end and work the tight end like Parham out to the flat or Anderson from the backfield out to the flat. So this kind of thing here that they're doing here, I don't know if it was play action or not. No, it's not play action. But him chipping and leaking out to the flat is something that Donald Parham actually almost did against the Vikings last year. Justin Herbert, um, his pre-snap motion from somebody else, Justin Herbert would bootleg to his right, and Donald Parham actually faked blocking to somebody before working out to the flat and mirroring Justin Herbert, right, and catching the ball in the flat and picking up a first down, I think 10 or whatever yards. And I think that this sort of similar look here, I know it's not the same. There's no pre-snap motion, and I don't think the CX did a whole lot of pre-snap motion, at least not with Everett. But the idea of, you know, blocking, chipping, leaking out to the flat like this is something that I think the Chargers are going to ask Everett to do. And they're very comfortable asking him to do that because of how elusive he is and how good he is after the catch and how you know how many missed tackles he can force, how many tackles he can break and all that sort of stuff. Same thing here. I believe this is play action. No bootleg here, but I just want you to imagine you know, what you know the Chargers would do with him. Same thing. Joe Lombardi likes getting his tight ends out of the flat because he wants them to be able to you know get those one-on-ones or just find empty space and with their athleticism, pick up that first down, make a guy miss, all that sort of stuff. And Gerald Everett, I think, fits right into what they want to do. So I think, you know, in this offense, Gerald Everett would be motioning behind the line of scrimmage, you know, running that slide route out to the flat. But, you know, it, you can get the general idea here. Right. So they are at the, let's say, nine. And all Gerald, Gerald Everett has to do, all he has to do, is pick up a first down here, right? Break that tackle, get that first down. He's going to throw Eric Stokes, I believe, to the ground here at the end. Very, very angry. I don't know what it is. Again, this guy, if it's a basketball thing, I don't know. I couldn't tell you much about basketball since I've never played it competitively. But um, he's he's got a physicality to him, just an angry violence to him that I don't even think Eckler has. Eckler's not like a angry, violent sort of guy. He's a great athlete strong player but i wouldn't consider him like a angry mean human being on the field nobody else is really like that gerald ever just has this mean streak to him to me when i see the Chargers offense this year i want justin herbert to make half as many spectacular throws as he did last year because i want him to get layups i want him to have easy dump off passes where you the, the receiver or the tight end, or the running back, or whatever, gives him 40 yards after the catch for a touchdown. I want Justin Herbert to get, you know, and if it looks like, you know, he didn't, like, if the conversation about Herbert is, oh, you know, he's just getting too many screens, and it's so easy for him, because everyone else is doing all the work for him, I would love to hear that. I want Justin Herbert, I, I we all know what Justin Herbert can do. We've seen it plenty of times, against the Raiders, against the Giants, against the Bengals, whatever. Any team, you name it. He can do whatever, but I don't want him to have to do that. And Gerald Everett is, is a guy who the Chargers added to their team to allow Justin Herbert to just get the layups. Hey, man, it's basically just a handoff. All right, this play is basically a handoff. It's pitch and catch, right? Give it to Everett. Let him get 10 yards for you. You're in a pickle. You're backed up in your own zone. Get it to Everett. Everett's going to break that tackle. Everett's going to get that first down. He's not going to quit. He's going to get that first down. He's going to make the catch. <laughs> Right, he's not gonna he's not gonna you know blow the play on you. He's gonna fight. It's a spark for the offense, and it's it's just it's a true, not just a safety net for Justin Herbert, but a true outlet where you know when everything's chaotic and maybe the defense is complex, 
or guys are hurt, the line's hurt, get the ball to Everett. Get the ball to Gerald, and Gerald will take care of the rest. All right, last play here. Sorry for the awkward spotlighting here. It's a snow game, so he looks like the. it's all dark on the field anyway, so I had to really make a awkward spotlight here. But again, you know, this is a guy that can attack you know, upfield. This is a guy who can work the seams, a guy who we've shown a couple of times here that you, know, you give him the ball over the middle, yards after the catch. Give him the ball to the sideline, yards after the catch. Right, we even showed on a couple of plays ago against the Steelers that corner route yards after the catch. He can do all that, but you know the Chargers do want to take their shots too. Um, I think in this particular case, you would maybe see Everett run like a deep crosser. Rather, I think they kind of Mike Williams do that, but I could see them doing that with Gerald Everett. Uh, you saw them take some shots with Donald Parham and Josh Palmer on that leak route, right? So he's not going to run that. I don't want to say this is leak. Um, because he doesn't exactly go behind the defensive line and then get upfield like I'm used to seeing leak. If it is, let me know because it looks like he can be blocking here, but he's just going to you know run free for a touchdown here off of play action. And I think the Chargers would love to incorporate that into their offense again. You know, I, I, could Jared Cook do this? I guess, but I think what's most important. So when Josh Palmer ran that leak route against the Giants and he picked up a nice first down, big play. I think Brandon Staley talked about, you know, it's great to be able to run that way. And you can run that with Josh Palmer because he can block. Like he can block in the run game, but he's also a good receiver. And I think the same applies for Gerald Everett. Now, Gerald Everett, we know he can block. And, you know, in this play, if they hand it off, you could totally expect Gerald Everett to be blocking on this play, but he can do more than that. He can also be a receiver. And so I think Brandon Staley thinks, hey, you know, I like these guys that can do more than one thing. And at the combine, right, he said, I want guys who are specifically receivers who, when they're on the field, you don't know what they're going to do when they step on the field. When Jalen Guyton's on the field, what is it? It's a go. It's a corner. Maybe he's blocking. That's about it. Maybe a quick out or something. But that's kind of it. Gerald Everett, a lot of stuff you can do with him. And, and part of that is just because he's also a good blocker. And I don't have any of the film on that right now or at least I didn't show any of that today outside of that chip, but you know, he is a good blocker and defenses, you know, aren't quite so sure. And I think on a play like this, you see him get lost in the shuffle and wide open on play action for a touchdown. So again, I don't want to call that leak, but he kind of looks like he could be. And then yeah, wide open for the touchdown. So that is Gerald Everett. I am a huge fan of him in terms of the value, in terms of the production, in terms of what I think he can do in this offense. And how, well, he's going to have a career year. Like if he stays healthy, he's easily going to have a career year with Justin Herbert, even though he's maybe option four in the receiving option you know, list on this team. He's still going to have a very, very nice year. He's going to be an outlet for Justin Herbert. He's going to be a set, you know, a guy who can generate easy yards well, not easy for him, um, but he will be able to get easy yards for this offense because he's just a physical presence. He's great at forcing missed tackles. I think I'm not saying I'm going to say he's the complete package, but I think he's a very well-rounded player that is sort of the complete package, even though he has no real elite trait. I think he is a fantastic player or he's a good player at many things, whereas Jared Cook was just kind of only a receiving tight end. And even in that regard, he was bad with drops, right? Everett has pretty solid hands. He's a good blocker. He's a good route runner, right? He's good after the catch. I actually would say he's probably great after the catch, especially when it comes to contact. There's so much you can do with him. So I'm really excited about him. Guys, let me know what you think about Gerald Everett. I'm very happy with him. I think he's going to be fantastic. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Steven is going to be dropping a Sebastian Joseph Day film breakdown. Um, I think after me or before me, we'll see. Both of us have had real struggles on StreamYard and Zoom with our recording. So hopefully this one works out. All right, guys, take care. Enjoy the rest of your week. And as always, bolt. Bye.